even put your mouth right. around Thanks. it. You, I'm glad you said it. I said it. Why, why do like I a, pretend to know? I don't like know. Like a pine tree almost. Allie's going to take over at this point. <laughs> I knew yeah, that this was possibly a porn site. Mm. So, yes. anyway. And I am certain that on this day my fellow Americans expect that on my induction into the presidency I will address them with a candor and a decision. Fear. It's real. It's a force. Famous author Napoleon Hill was quoted with, Fears are nothing more than a state of mind. With the present situation of our people impelled. We all have it. We've all fallen victim to it. The uncontrollable desire to run. But what if we stay? What if we fight that ugly feeling to experience what is on the other side? What if we discover we have nothing to fear after all? What if the only thing we have to fear is fear itself? In this episode, I meet with a friend who has spent a lifetime killing fear in inner monologues. Singer-songwriter Allie Gray is most likely the busiest musician in Minnesota, spending most of her weeks performing in multiple bands, including Two Hicks and One Chick, Drunch, Allie Gray Band, and the occasional backup singer for Martin Zeller. Singer, songwriter, mother, I introduce you to Allie Gray. and eat so badass peeps. I appreciate you coming out. Thank you for inviting me. Okay, so me. It's gonna be so fun. I know there's a lot I left out. That's okay. <laughs> I want you to fill in the gaps. Yeah. Because it's not just about two hicks and a chick. No, although I love singing with them because it's probably the one that I'm most consistently performing with yeah. in the week. But I do sing also in a group called Mishmash, which is more of a rock cover band. We do a lot of weddings and corporate events. And then I have a, an acoustic duo called Drunch, and I do that a couple times a month. And that simply Drunk Brunch. Yeah. We play daytime shows on the weekends. <laughs> and then um, I also have my own music, my Ally Gray music, my original stuff. And then I still, from time to time, will sing with Martin Zeller yeah. in his as well. So take us back because you actually in your earlier years of performing music Martin was a big part of yeah. you growing into your shoes today right? 100% I would say because of him is why I'm where I'm at I would say because well I started singing in a local all-girl group but it was okay. a track band where we sang two tracks rather yeah. than with the band. Yeah. And that's where I learned how to sing harmony parts, was with them. And then I was singing with them, and then another group, and we had a show at O'Gara's, and somebody heard me there and knew that Martin Zeller was in need of a new backup singer. Yeah. And I'm feeling audition for his band from his bass player Nick Ciola and I didn't know I thought it was a joke I thought yeah. there, somebody was putting me on <laughs> right. and um, truthfully I got the job and within I want to say five days we were doing a show at O'Gara's it was the Neil Diamond tribute okay. so I had five days to cram 
these Neil Diamond songs. I'm sure you've played at O'Gara's. I think oh, yeah. that they fit about 600 people in the room. Mm -hmm. The first time I sang in the garage, yeah. yeah, there was 900 people in there. Oh my gosh! And I wasn't used to that. Yeah. I was used to not that many. <laughs> and I think I stared at his mouth the whole time yeah. to make sure I didn't spill Single a words. word. Yeah. <laughs> And I was scared out of my mind. I didn't want to look at anybody. So what we have here is the uh, Trash Browns. They have this in their starters. Okay. This is like every person who has a hangover's dream. Wake me up, I'm getting tired of sleep. Think I had it. If you've never been to Bad Waitress, it's an open kitchen over here. And they serve breakfast and lunch and dinner pretty much all day and they're open at 8 a.m. So this is like, it's a, they've been super accommodating. They've got a full bar, as you can see. And they're just great people. They've been so nice. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So when I told my wife that I was at going to buy a waitress today, she said, oh, that's the place where they intentionally give you bad service. That's not it. That's Dick's last resort. That's Dick's last resort. Right, don't this go is, there. Th yeah. <laughs> I've been I there. I, I used you? to play there. That's really? not a place you want to play live music and have people shouting insults at you. By the way, you they don't do? want to do that. Yeah. Well, because it's their shtick. Or, you know, saying Chuck E. Cheese, right? Everything I do is fun. You know, picking on the peons that I wait on. Thank you. My pleasure. Nothing else I'd rather be doing on a Saturday afternoon than waiting on you people. And so when people come in to dine, they think it's carte blanche to right. shout insults right. at you because you're part of the entertainment staff. Um, the the mixture and the Bloody Mary was very thick. Yes. I wasn't I wasn't like prepared for that the first time. Soup I... or something. Yeah, yeah. A soup. Soup. Yeah. Okay. Here we go. Cute. What is this little part? So Adorable. is this the sorceress? Okay. Yeah. Of course. Oh, it smells delicious. This reminds me of mm. those little uh, like homemade fruit no, roll-ups. No, it, that's ex left. <laughs> wow. That's exactly what this drink tastes like. A fruit roll. Really? Get in Cheers. there. It's so good. Cheers. <laughs> right? It's a, oh my gosh. It's a fruit roll up in a, right? That is a fruit roll up. It is. It's dried fruit in a. Yeah, drink. that's amazing. I will probably consume all of that drink. Me too. <laughs> okay. I want you to dig back into your past. Um, and, and tell me about the worst musical moment you had. The one that made you question whether or not you wanted to continue doing this. I didn't have too many of those moments because I love, I love singing so much that I feel like I kind of knew stuff would come up that I didn't like. However, I will tell you it was early on I am pretty shy, and I also, I mean, it was pretty normal in my early 20s and late teens. I battled some insecurities, mm -hmm. you know, and early on when I started singing with Martin Zeller, back then on your websites, they had live message boards. So you could write something. Away. Yeah, a guest book. A guest book. I remember those. Yes. yes. And the first or second show I ever did with him, of course, I ran home and popped on his website. Yeah. And it, there was some feedback that was pretty hard for okay. me to read. And I thought, I don't know if I'm proud for this because I never been, I just really love to sing. And it was never about being judged by something. Mm. I just really loved doing it. And I questioned if I had thick enough skin. Well, in full disclosure, I did a TV show. In you did? the year 2000. Okay. And at the time, it was called Your Big Break. It was only on for two years. The host was Alfonso Ribeiro. I'm Alfonso Ribeiro. We're back with more of the season finale of your big break. Now, here's the inside scoop on our next final. Carlton. Yes. From, right? From yeah. Fresh Prince of Bel Air. And it was out in Hollywood at Burbank Studios, and I went out there. And the, the shtick was they'd have musicians come out and they'd dress you up as the artist that you're performing and you'd get out and sing sure. like the artist. Wow, so if you're singing Cher. 
they dressed you up like Cher, like Cher. and then you sang it. Okay. Okay, so I did this. In that sounds like 2000. a 2000 concept. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and I sang uh, Belinda Carlisle, The Go-Go's. We got the beat. Okay. They dressed me up as Belinda Carlisle. Okay. And it was a contest show, so I competed. So my experience with that, though, was not anything in comparison to what they go through on The Voice or American Idol, but it was this opportunity to be on national TV. And I just, I don't know. I think it takes a certain type of person, and I know that that's just not yeah. me. I think I side with, like, Dave Grohl's opinion about the contest shows. You don't have to stand in line at the song contest on TV to become a fucking popular musician, you know? Fuck product placement and fucking labels and A&R people and all that bullshit. It doesn't fucking matter. Go ahead and do the shows yeah. if you get invited. That's yeah. fun. Don't rely on the shows to make your career. I'm doing it the same way everybody else has made it. Yeah. Play, perform, because yeah. you're only going to get better the, the longer you you're on it. stage, the more you do it. And that's so true. You know, if like, you think about your own career, I know for me, I've been doing it 20 years, and I think about the early days, just how much you learn just trial by fire. It's right. all about the number of gigs, and I think, but that's old school way of thinking too. You know, nowadays they're posting stuff on YouTube, and you can get a career. Yeah, That's well, incredible. yeah, I agree, but I, again, I think that uh, the ones that last are the ones that have, have, have the meat behind it, yeah. which is the experience. I agree. You know what I mean? And there's, there's something to be said for those early days when you had to hang posters and hand out flyers. I, I would go uh -huh. to shows, yeah. and when it was letting out, I'd hand out my flyer yeah, for me too. my band. Oh my gosh, I cannot tell you how many how many hours or days I would spend outside of some of the popular clubs, the First Avenues yep. and the Quest. Remember when the Quest was around? Um, and, and just hand out tickets, yeah. you know, and say, this is a free show, free show, come to this, you know, it would be the fine line. Or, uh, the fine line, because you had to get so many bodies yeah. in with your how, name on it. How many tickets did you go get printed from the fine line? Do you remember? Of course, yes. Oh my gosh, I forgot about that on those fan <laughs> nights. Yeah. You have to print them off. Yep. Because if you got a certain amount of bodies in, you got to do an opening for a Friday or mm -hmm. Saturday. Yes. And then eventually you worked your way up to sure. the headline. And you got a dollar cool. for a tick every and ticket. And you did get a, yeah. so you got paid. Yeah, one, one dollar. <laughs> but, but listen, kids, that's not <laughs> it, okay? I went back to the fine line multiple times before a show. And I remember the, we, the first time we had our showcase was a, a Tuesday. Yes. And. I asked right up front for 1,400 tickets. So since two, oh two 700 yep. runs. Yeah. And we spent the whole two months passing out tickets to everybody. And I swear to God, some people were like, you just gave me this like last week. And I was like, well, come. I really want you right. to yeah, come to the friend. show. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I, we worked hard. And then we, uh, we ended up having enough people on our first night to get rotating Saturdays at the fine line. We, we weren't opening for National Acts, but we had rotating Saturdays, See? which that was insane. Hard work matters. Hard work does, it does. matter. It should, it hard. should. Cheers. Cheers to hard work. <laughs> to hard work. <laughs> you can drink a little bit more though. Okay. I always think that salt and pepper on the table is like steak sauce, like, like it's almost an insult. Say. I know, to the chef. Yeah. I know, and especially when people use it before they taste it. Right. Oh. Come on. I know. <laughs> this is a, the vegan mac and cheese. Okay. So I'm gonna let you dive in. I'll just take. You know, I always say I would be vegan if my family would allow me because it's totally, I, I'd be a vegetarian or vegan, but yeah. my little daughter mm -hmm. loves meat. She's a steak oh. fanatic. Oh, I love that. Well, My wife is a uh, aspiring vegan. She's actually she? been a vegetarian since she was nine. Must be the alley thing. Yeah, I know. It must be. <laughs> I could jump aboard that easily. <laughs> okay. So the you, the cheese is definitely cheesy. You can't tell that it's vegan. I agree. Um, the crunch is cool. There's like a little yeah. like uh, bread crumb. Or yeah, something. bread crumb. It's kind of baked in it. It might have garlic on it. So it has like that garlicky bite. 
It's not a spice, but there's a like a garlicky. There part. is, and the chives probably. Mm -hmm. No, it's good. It's that is very good. good. You'd never know this was vegan if someone didn't tell you, right? Right. right. If it wasn't titled vegan, vegan. mac and cheese, yeah, you would never know. <laughs> Speaking of, I think this is like one of those real fruit fruit roll-ups. By the way, as my daughter called fruit leather. Fruit leather? Yeah. That's funny. Let's try it. I liked that little fruit thing. Yeah. Yeah, the fruit thing was good. It's like a fruit snack. I, yeah, like a fruit leather. <laughs> oh boy. Tell me uh, oh about your aha moment. <laughs> the moment that you were like, I. I'm cut out to, I'm, not, I'm designed to be a singer. I, I want to be a singer. I answer. So I talked a little bit about this insecurity and shyness and all of that. And so that, I really sat in that for about 10 years of my music career where I was really shy and at my shows, I had a hard time talking to people. And, um, you know, and people want to connect with you. As a performer and a songwriter, people want to talk to you. Right. And I was so shy that I had a hard time and I'd also had really bad stage fright. So before every show I would just have all this anxiety and after it was over it was constantly filled with this self-talk about how awful it was. Yeah. And then about 10 years ago, maybe even less, I just, it's when I started to do it completely full-time with music okay. and I said it just doesn't matter anymore. It's got to be about, especially when it comes to songwriting, it's got to be about um, what I like and how I feel and part of it's age you know you get older especially for me as I got older it just what it doesn't matter anymore right. what people think I want people to always think I'm a kind person that's important to me that people say you know what Allie Gray she's super nice she's super cool don't she be says yes to, to everything out. she'll say yes to almost everything <laughs> she does she really will uh I, you can only see the first two rows or three rows when you're on stage. Mm -hmm. And they might be color and they might yeah. brighten everything, but after that it becomes black and white and I can't see your faces. Yeah. And so it's the movement of the crowd that yeah. makes the difference. It's the people that are in the first two rows that, that make the matter. difference. And if I see those yes. are the my best, you know, my That's even my mom and my you. dad I sitting know. up there. Yes, I know. I feel great. Yeah. If I don't, if I see somebody who's just not enjoying themselves, why are you That's in the front the row? That's the one person you can see. That's it. Yeah. You know what? There's a lot of musicians that don't look at faces. Yeah. I do too, though. And that I feed off of that, and mm -hmm. I see reactions, and I see how things are yeah. going. Yeah. Was that pitchy? Jeez. Yeah. I know. <laughs> you can see. I could see it in their face. <laughs> yeah. Was it the food they ate, or was it, I pitchy? I'm Probably not even pitchy, sure. <laughs> I don't know. But I do. I will say those original shows, they're the most stressful for me because they're the most vulnerable, but they can be the most fulfilling. Yeah. When they're good, right? You go right. home, and you're just like... That was great. Yeah, I know. I knew I was yeah. doing what I was meant was to do. Yeah. yeah. Okay, I get it. Yeah, I t I'm totally there. I also have a little shampoo effect going on, so. What does that mean? Well, you know, you know how you lather, rinse, and repeat, and the yeah. second time you wash your hair, it becomes more latherous right away? Sure. That's I don't actually ever follow the instructions. Oh. <laughs> You, yeah. you got your first beer buzz? Uh, yeah. Oh, I'm kind of jealous. <laughs> I love the one beer buzz. The it's one beer buzz. The shampoo effect. What do we, okay. I never time. follow the instructions. This one has time in it. This one is called the What's Up Duck. There's carrot juice then. It's carrot juice. Carrot orange juice. This, sorceress? Oh yeah, the we'll so sorceress. Sorceress. Which is a fruit leather drink. The fruit leather drink. I really think Andy should rename it. <laughs> Andy, know. if you're watching this, <laughs> we've renamed your drink to the fruit leather. Okay, it's really refreshing. It is. It's like a fresh pressed juice yes. with vodka. Yeah. Which I enjoy. This is. A, and the time makes you. Is that time? Your, yeah. I know it's time. That is time. Okay. I don't taste the time. Do you smell the time? I just smell it when I go okay. into the yeah. sippy. Because it's all a part of the same senses here. Right. You call it a sippy. That's the, I did. That's the That's mom in you. All over. That's totally the mom in you. <laughs> yeah. The mom just came out with your fruit leather and your sippy. I don't know what's happening. What's becoming me? The point of the time is to make it Right. Duh. That makes sense. So the, t the time, this is time? This is rosemary. Time. 
It's time. It, it looks like rosemary, though. No, it doesn't. Rosemary is long and... I don't know. Why, why do like I a, pretend to know? I don't Like a pine know. tree, almost. Allie's going to take over at this point. <laughs> I, I do like herbs. I didn't mean... <laughs> I didn't mean it like that. I've never even done it. Oh, God. You're doing a great job, Brown. Okay. This one's really going to kind of soak things up a little bit. Oh, my gosh. So this is their homemade, like, tomato soup sauce marinara kind of stuff here. And that there, that little green stuff there, that's thyme. No, Just kidding. Not. That's <laughs> just <That's> thyme. <laughs> okay. So this is their grilled cheese. How do you even put your... Mouth right. around Thanks. it. You, I'm glad you said it. I said it's it. Super girls. <laughs> <laughs> this coming from the woman who has a band named Two Hicks and One Chick. Thanks for saying it right. <laughs> Be surprised how many people say it wrong. What do they say? Tell me what they say. No. <laughs> And a yeah. chick. Oh my god. So gosh. a lot of people have, will say instead of two hicks and a chick, they'll say, ha ha ha. Isn't your band called Two Dicks and a Chick? Oh, I I'm always appalled. thought they were being so funny. I was enlightened today. No, not by, by me. Judd. Mm, yes. I didn't know. Oh. I was I was completely oblivious oh, to this no, fact. No, no, by Judd, that it's actually a production. Yeah, it's an right. adult industry production. A fetish of some sort uh, for some. For quite a few, I suppose. <laughs> Because it, because it, it's a thriving I had industry. No idea that this was possibly a porn site. Mm, so yes. Anyway. Yes. You. How do you not know that? I mean, I, I really want to know. Like, this is not going on the actual final thing. Thank I, God. I, I do really want to know. How do you? How did somebody come up with that name? You're like that. It. That's really. Two hicks and a chick. I thought was brilliant. And I will say this: the first time that it I, is. I I posted it and I got Who our forgets it? page. Nobody. Nobody. And I even got an email from someone up in the Duluth area that said, yeah. "That's the name of my band. You yes. owe me money." No shit. And I said, I googled it. There's no website attached to it. No Facebook page attached to it. And he said, "I know, but that'll be fifteen hundred dollars." Yeah, right. And I said, "Not happening, <laughs> sir." <laughs> And that was the end of that. That's all right. Hey, let's bite into our sandwich. I can't. I had to. This is like Italian Dunkers. You've, yes, you've separated I, at like, Denali's. Remember, remember Italian Dunkers when, yeah, in Denali's. like elementary school? Well, at Denali's, they actually have something called That's in White Bear Lake. What is you Denali's? Don't know about it. <laughs> you've said it three thing. times. I think I would get it. At Denali's? Yeah. Okay, let's give it a bite. This, sound, this looks delicious. It smells delicious. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Okay. The bread is super awesome. The cheese yeah. is super awesome. It is really good. And the grilled cheese. There's something in the sauce that's um, a flavor. Yeah, it's, that's it's familiar. It's uh, time. What is it? <laughs> it's not time. <laughs> it's not time. It's not time. Oh, it's bacon. It's not. Wait, I got it. Red pepper. There's red pepper in there. Uh huh. How do you know that? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. It's good, though. This oh, it's is not good. spicy. Mm -hmm. It's not. This is super good. Oh, this, that's good. This um, tomato. It's like a dip, right? Oh. Oh, oh the I'm park. Impressed. I need to go on one of the Food Network shows. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> so this is a red pepper bisque. Look, at it's the consistency of it is it's a little bit thicker than like a, like a tomato soup, but it definitely pairs well with like the grilled cheese. If I was going to be on death row in my final meal, yeah. mm -hmm. well, it'd actually be like really, really good cheese yeah. and a really good bottle of wine. What was holding you back from giving it your all in the music industry? Stage fright and insecurities. Sure. So I, yeah, I really was so shy in high school but I wanted to be a singer so badly. And back then, there there were these, you would go in the newspaper and they'd have vocal competitions. Yeah. And I, it was in the classified ads. And I'd go to my mom and say, this before I had a license, and I'd say, I really want to try out for this vocal competition. But then I would, I'd throw up days before because I was so nervous to show up. And my days mom- Days before? Yes. My and, goodness. But I wanted to do it so badly, I wanted to try. I don't know, I don't know. That sounds crazy when I say that out loud. Because why would I put myself through that? But there was something in there that I just always knew I really wanted to sing. It was a place yeah. I felt the most yeah. 
comfortable and yet the most uncomfortable. Awful. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, clearly, if you're puking, you're not I comfortable. I was. I'd get so scared. So stage fright and um, shyness. Sure. For sure. Are for you competitive? Fun. Yes. Okay. So I think that's what. Yeah. And that comes from my dad's side. So you're not yeah. going to let anything get in your way, even your own self. That's, that's what it was. I think it was myself. It, it probably I was more competitive with myself in that I knew it wasn't about other people, but it was about I feel this way. I know I can push through. Get through it. Okay. So this is an old fashioned. This is going to put us over the edge. My a husband's bit. favorite drink is an old fashioned. Um, yeah. And you know what is interesting is oh Minneapolis God, has embraced the the old fashioned. Uh, just about every it's restaurant you go to has a different representation or a different twist on the old fashioned but they are always delicious i agree and they're a lot like the bloody mary so anywhere you go you're gonna have like their own a version of it right There's so a, yeah i think right. it's really all about the ice this is chipped ice do you like old fashions typically they're really strong they're <laughs> but uh I, we only I have well, I have 15 more questions to go. I'm ready. <laughs> Again, it's my husband's favorite drink. He's from Madison, and there's a restaurant in Madison called The Old Fashioned. Oh. And they make only... So let's do a traditional Bruce and Eats cheers, okay. which is touch glasses, touch the table, touch the lips. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> so strong. Okay, we need to do that again. <laughs> Did you make a face? We gotta do it again. <laughs> okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know what to do. Best piece of advice you've been given for my all of your years. Career. Two th two forms. One came not as verbal advice. It was when I was hired by Martin Zeller. I sat back and watched because he's been very successful. So right. the only thing a smart person would do as a budding musician is to shut up and watch. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I did, and I, he led by example, and the things that I picked up from him were always be kind to, kind to a sound person, sound engineer. There's, there's, it's pure and simple rock and roll etiquette. And I have a friend, Patrick Tanner, who, he was in Martin's band at the time too. He wants to write a book called Rock and Roll Etiquette, which I think is really smart. For up and coming musicians, if they don't quite know, but there's, there's etiquette in showing up on time. So Martin's, you know, so I, you show up on time. I still do to this day. I get told often by sound engineers, particularly, the lead singer never shows up on time. They always just show up at, you know, at the end. But I think it's important to get there on time. Finally. Yes. How can we connect with you and what important things do you have coming up? Um, you can connect with me. I have a website, alleygray.com, that is being rebuilt, but it's still accessible. And um, Facebook, just Allie Gray, A-L-I-G-R-E-Y. I'm on Instagram and um, am I forgetting something? Probably Twitter. I don't really look at it. Um, and But I am doing another album. Okay. And I'm in the process of that. I hope it's out this spring. I hope okay. that when this episode comes up, okay. I, I really am hoping and working on it. Um, and it'll be my third album. Well, fourth if you count Christmas. Yeah. And, um, 2015. Yes. Other than that, um, all of my stuff is on my calendar page on yep. my website. I list, and that's every band that I'm in. It lists where I'm going to be. And sure. summer is always, if this is coming out in May, summer is bananas. Thankfully, press musicians. Yeah. It's a great working opportunity for all the patios that are open. Yeah, we're lucky. We are lucky. Well, cheers. Gratitude. I, I appreciate you hanging out with us Thanks on another for episode me. of Brews and Eats with Badass Peeps. My name is Judd Haley. Allie Gray, I really appreciate you being here. It was really fun. Thanks, cheers. Guys. Thank you. Thank you very much.
like a shift in the flow 